Welcome to the Noonday Meditation with Wayne Vernon. Genesis chapter 32, 22 and following. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. In seeking to make peace with his estranged brother, Jacob caught himself in the throes of fear. He struggled with the thoughts of uncertainty regarding his brother's response toward him when they finally met. Consequently, he prayed and strategized during the interim. But at this point, both parties were inching closer and the confrontation was now inevitable. In a final effort to try to avert a wholesale destruction of life and property, should Esau become violent when they met, Jacob took his two wives and his maidservants and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. Interestingly, Jacob spent that night alone. We may say that he used his family and servants as a human shield, but that's debatable. What we're certain of is that uh, he had another divine encounter with God that night that changed his life forever. And Jacob had a few encounters with, with God listed in the text. Jacob was left alone, says the verse 24 and 25, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as, as he wrestled with the man. In this encounter, Jacob was attacked by a man. How terrifying this must have been for him. He's alone with no one to assist him. And he has no idea who this man is. But Jacob was not one to give up. He fought all with all his might and all night. And realizing that this was a divine encounter, he held on to his opponent and demanded a blessing. Loved ones, sometimes the conflict resolution process is far more complicated than we think. You see, we often focus on the other person or persons, but quite often there are issues in our own lives that must be dealt with in order for resolution to be successful. You see, my friends, we must pay attention to the fact that we are not perfect or innocent or without fault and blame. There may be issues in our own lives that, that affect our relationships negatively. Everywhere we go, every office we work in, every marriage, every relationship, every community, every church. 
Let us stop blaming others and seek by God's grace to have the Holy Spirit fix us. Jacob needed to be fixed. It might happen in our own relationships that whatever is going on in our lives will impact every single relationship we engage in until we resolve personal issues we will not be able to successfully resolve the challenges with our spouses with our family members with our colleagues etc when confronted with his own demons jacob held on in desperation and pleaded for a blessing and he received it how about you how about us today are you still defending your innocence and blaming the other party? Loved ones, there is enough blame to go around. But if, if, we, if we let the Holy Spirit deal with us, He will reveal and expose our demons so that we may be delivered. The heavenly being asked Jacob his name. As he said his name from his own lips, he declared what his name meant and his associated character. He received a change of name to reflect that which God intended for him and not that which man intended for him. When he was born, according to Genesis chapter 25, 24 and following, he came out of the womb holding on to his brother's heel and so he was named accordingly. He was confronted that night with that which dominated his life all these years. But God was about to change something in his life. He had to come to grips with himself. May God help us today to be confronted by our own issues. And may we accept our faults and our failings so that we may be delivered before we confront the other person. My friends, we must come to grips with ourselves before we try to confront others. Should you need further instructions in these matters, please feel free to text the number 647-696-0422. Should you desire to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, please text the word salvation to this number as well. And please remember to pick up your copy of my book, Six Practices of Effective Leadership. You may pick up your copy on Amazon today. The link is conveniently provided for you in the description below. We look forward to hearing from you. You could let us know how we can be of support to you in your churches in training the leaders and preparing them for the leadership process in your church. We look forward to hearing from you and we really want to be of support and partnership with you in your local church. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Noonday Meditation with Pastor Wayne Vernon. Please forward this study to your friends, your relatives, associates, neighbors, and all those persons in your social network. If you have a prayer request, please feel free to communicate with us and we will commit to supporting you in prayer. Until we meet again tomorrow, Shalom.